Hi, I'm Tan Franz. Welcome to my home. Come on in. The house was built in 1906. I actually ended up purchasing it over FaceTime. I was away. I called my husband. So he came to the home, showed me around on FaceTime, and I said, we're buying that house. He said, there's no way. It's hideous. However, I would like to believe that being incredibly gay, I have vision, and uh, that vision is usually to make things pretty. And here we have it. Okay, this is a very common misconception that because I have very easy access to an interior designer, Bobby, that I would have asked Bobby for advice. However, I wanted to show Bobby that I could do it and that I'd learnt. And so no, I didn't ask Bobby Burke. He's seen it and he seems very impressed. The first thing I purchased for my home was my sofa. There's a lot of gray that runs throughout the house, a lot of gray and brass. And so having this piece that felt almost mid-century modern with the brass hints dictated the rest of the decor of the ground floor. Okay, this is the focal point of this room. I wanted to make a feature of this wall. I didn't just want to have arches and not fill them well. It all centered around this. This we had in our old home. I like it very much. And so that was going to be the vibe of these shelves. And so almost everything that you'll see on here is from a vintage store or a thrift store. And then there's these awards here, which I hide away behind a clock and nobody ever gets to see those. I am very proud of what the show has achieved but I'm also very embarrassed by the accolades. So these light fixtures were original to the house. We had them rewired. I love these. I think they're a beautiful sconce. We were looking at more modern ones. It just didn't fit in with the vibe of the house. The fireplace was incredibly hideous. It was a terracotta color. It was all tiled. I did not like it at all, but it was original to the house and I didn't want to rip it out. I wanted to keep as much integrity of the, to the original house as possible. And so we just painted it so it blends in with the rest of the home. When you see me on the show Queer Eye, season one and season two, and I'm often looking off and I feel quite distracted, it's because I was thinking, oh, what mirror is going to go above my fireplace? It was so considered that I wanted to make sure we found a mirror that mimicked the shape of the arch on the wall of my home. And we finally found it. And I think it works beautifully. So from the living room, we walk into the kitchen. Um, I love that, again, there's no door, so it feels still relatively open, but we have those comfortable spaces, smaller spaces. We've made the cabinets gray to make it feel a little more modern. We added brass touches to make it somewhat classic. This is a, a concrete, a custom concrete countertop. I am very comfortable with my masculinity and my femininity. I'm more feminine than masculine. But when I designed the house, I didn't want it to feel like a woman's home, like a girl's home. I think it would have been equally lovely and but more feminine, I think, to add a, like a marble countertop. It would have been very nice, but I like that this feels a little more industrial and robust. I loved this Viking oven. I bake constantly. I cook almost every day. I bake almost every day. And so the, the kitchen's very, very important to me. Um, and I like that I have enough space to be able to make a meal for 12 people. The only thing I want to do when I'm home is either sit on my sofa and watch TV or be in here cooking something wonderful or baking something wonderful for my husband and my friends. It makes me so happy. However, we did run out of storage space already. That is a common problem we have in our home. This just got added a few months ago. So this was a completely open space. This is now all storage under here, so it's practical. I didn't think I was going to use it for a functional space, but I, I truly do. It, it makes me really happy. I have a piece of artwork here. The artist, I actually don't know what her name is other than her Instagram handle and her business is called Strange Dirt. And she's a twin. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of uh, her artwork around the house and her twin's artwork. This feels almost art deco. And there's touches of the house that feel very much 50s. So, uh, uh, sorry, between 20s and 50s. And so this fits in, in my opinion, beautifully. Um, you'll also find a lot of my husband's artwork around the house. My husband is a wonderful artist and a very successful artist. Every now and then he'll let me keep the pieces that I'm obsessed with and so we'll have it in the house. However, what we'll find is that it'll be up for a month and then he gets sick of it and he wants to move on to something else. He's a typical artist, it drives me insane. So my husband, he starts work really, really early in the morning. He leaves at like five o'clock. So I come here first thing in the morning to make coffee. This is the only way I can start my day. And he leaves notes for me every day, 11 and a half years on. And this is what's his note this morning. He's terrible writing. You might not be able to read what that says. He's just the, the truly is the nicest person on the planet. I love him so much. <laughs> 
I love my dining room. So off the kitchen, I wanted a separate dining room. That was has been my dream since I was a little boy. Quite honestly, we grew up quite poor. My parents were immigrants, usually working two, three jobs. We didn't have a dining room. We didn't have a large space. I had this fantasy that one day I wanted to live in America because I used to watch a lot of American TV. And when I live in America, I want to have a dining table where I could eat with my friends and my family. And when we purchased a home, this was an office. It did not have uh, this. I wanted to make sure that we had an archway that mirrored all the other archways in the home. We had a domed ceiling to add a point of interest. I wanted to create a table that was large enough for 10 people to sit around because there was 10 of us who are very close and that come into my home every time I'm home. So this is a perfect size table for them. These lights, it took us ages to find. I believe they came from India. They create a really low light. We wanted that kind of ambience. We didn't want a bright uh, dining room at all. It's the most warm space in the evening. I spend the happiest days of my life in this room without a doubt. I am obsessed with the queen. I just find her fascinating. And so I found this weirdly in a vintage store. I treat this the way religious people treat a Bible. Like I make sure that it's always taken care of. If it falls on the floor, you'll, you'll hear me gasp. One of my favorite things in the home that just makes me giggle is this. So if you look closely, you will see it's a picture of me and my idiots. This was produced for us by Netflix. And they sent it in a lovely frame. We didn't frame it. And I believe all of us have it in our homes. I've seen it in Anthony's, I've seen it in Jonathan's, and I believe that Bobby and Chroma have it in theirs. If they haven't, what are you doing, dum dums? Like, put it up. It's so nice. Okay, now I'll show you upstairs before we get all the way up the chandelier. This chandelier took quite some time also to decide on what we wanted to do. We didn't want to do something small. We wanted it to be really dramatic. This was custom made in India for us. They're all individual glass pieces, which are incredibly heavy. It weighs a ton. We are worried that one night in the middle of the night, there's going to be an almighty bang and it's going to be this. But for two years, it hasn't failed. So let's hope it's going to last another 30. We don't have a lot of guests staying because I'm here so infrequently. So every six months or so, we'll have somebody come stay. Again, all of our rooms have this domed effect, this arched effect, so um, we couldn't split the room. I chose chocolate velvet curtains to make it look rich and luxe. And then this is the only space you will see photos of my husband and I. And the only reason we put it up is because we're being ourselves, which is morons. We don't take serious portraits that's just not our vibe at all and so yeah that little piece there is the only evidence you have that I am still married and that he hasn't divorced me even though I'm a nightmare. So this rocking chair I love very much hopefully I will be a father one day and I wanted something that would be cute and comfortable and fit in with the house that I could rock my baby to sleep in and so this is it I think it's a lovely chair. I don't know if I, I didn't even think that I was going to show you this, but I am going to show you this. It is my candle closet. So my candle closet, I'm obsessed with. I wish you had smell vision because it smells, ah, oh, like just so, so good. We always have candles burning in the house. This is actually the least full it's been in a very, very long time. And then if I'm in a bad mood, which is very rare, my husband knows where I am. I'm usually just here sniffing in the closet. I'm really particular about bathroom space. The way to achieve a successful marriage is this. I know this is a bougie thing to say, but if you can afford it, don't go number two in the same place as your partner because then you keep the mystique alive. This is a shared bathroom for us to shower, but this is his bathroom. You know what I mean. We don't really bath, so like we're not bath people. And I always thought, oh, that seems sexy to have two showers in a shower. We've been married for 11 and a half years. Who cares if there's two shower heads? Nothing romantic is happening in here. It's just nice to look at. I like to keep as much continuity across the home. So yes, we have a lot of brass. I love the subway tile. I know that it was trendy a couple of years ago and people are probably over it. I see it as a classic. I love it so much. And then the tile on the floor, I want it to be simple colors. So it's really easy to tie in other colors and hopefully be livable for many, many decades and without it going out of style. Nothing in the house you will see other than the actual structure is original. We changed everything in the home. The house was a house, it was not a home. It was a gnarly, gnarly house. And now it's a home. Okay, so off the master bathroom 
is our bedroom. I wanted a large enough bed, but not too large. So let me tell you this. This is the furthest I will allow him and he will allow me to be from each other. So we chose to get a normal size bed. People, when they see it on Instagram, they make fun saying, all that house and you chose to get a small bed. I want to be close to my husband. I like him a lot. I love that it's gray ties in with downstairs, which is immediately below this. Downstairs, you'll notice we painted the concerts white. These were originally black. We just had them refinished. I love that accent on the walls. This space here used to be a closet, like a linen closet. I wanted to be able to create a little nook. Uh, and I think this works beautifully. I love this. I spend a lot of time on this. When I'm not downstairs on my sofa, I will usually be in here. This used to be a shower room in here and then the majority of it was a closet. Instead of having a closet, I turned this into a water closet. I love the bathroom. I think it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I always fantasized about having a clawfoot bathtub. But here's the thing. I don't take baths. Neither does my husband. I will force myself to take one maybe every six months just so I feel like I'm not a complete idiot for creating this bathroom. And so this is literally an Instagram bathroom. I don't use this for real life. I actually hate having a bath. I think it's a complete waste of time. I have this bench here for the once or twice a year when I'm having a bath where my husband can sit in here and we can have a, a lovely chit chat. And then we have this butler stand right here, which has a bunch of robes that are clearly decorational only, that they just serve no purpose because nobody's using this damn bathroom. Uh, there's only two of us that live in this home. I think this space is bloody beautiful. It's the place where I come to take Instagram content. That's it. So because I removed the original closet and I clearly have a lot of clothes because I do that for a living, I will show you what my closet looks like. So come along. Okay, so the final space that's actually finished is the closet. So the closet is the only space of the house that I didn't design myself completely. I worked with this design company to create a closet that felt very much me. I didn't want it to be too feminine. I didn't want it to be too masculine. I wanted it to feel like a really good balance. And so this is what we achieved. This floor runs the whole length of the house. This section here is my husband's. He doesn't have a lot of clothes. So this is his section. The rest of it is mine on Queer Eye. I talk through how a closet should be organized to make life a lot easier for you. And I always talk about color coordinating your closet. Come, 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 let me show you. So I've loosely done it. So I categorize my clothes uh, into all button up shirts, all suits, all uh, lightweight jackets, all heavy jackets. You'll see that I mostly do it. It just Fs up every now and then. I travel a lot. I ain't got time to figure out my closet right now. We have shelves at the top of this that are completely empty. I haven't found the perfect thing that will live there yet that will bring me complete joy. And so they are currently empty. Don't judge me. This right here is the piece that I wore for the Emmys. This took a disgusting amount of hours for people to hand embroider this whole thing. So I have not reworn it yet because it seems like a lot of luck. Like I can't really go down to the grocery store in this. However, maybe I will one day. Maybe I'll feel really extra about my life. You know, clueless. There was this moment where Elisa Silverstone, Cher, is getting robbed and the robber says, okay, get on the floor. And she's like, oh my gosh, no, this is an alaya. And he's like, a what? -a? It's an alaya, a really important designer. And so I found this vintage alaya. So this is a women's piece. It is tiny. I have not worn it yet. I got it about six months ago and I'm waiting for the right kind of occasion to wear it on a red carpet because it's definitely extra. Um, usually when I'm trying to put it on, my husband has to come over and push my ribs in so I can close it. Okay, so it's very like 80s. Oh God, I put on some timber. Wow. We're gonna break um, what we call the fourth wall, which means you guys. And I'm gonna bring in a lovely young man who's producing this to help bring my ribs in. This is Ross. He's lovely hair. Oh, the other way? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, there it is. Hey. <gasps> Thank you, Ross. I am breathing in so hard, but do you see that shape it creates? My God, that's good. I'm very, very happy about it. <gasps> I love the dark wood. I love the wallpaper. We have a lot of wallpaper in the house. Wallpaper is actually very traditionally English. We don't have a lot of paint in our homes because it's actually a lot colder in England than it is here. And so to warm up the house, you usually have wallpaper and it just feels a lot cozier. What I love about the closet is that there is so much space in here. Like behind all these hanging clothes, there are more shelves. But the thing I was most excited about is room for shoes. 
I have a problem. This is only about half of my footwear. I've got some more there, some boots there. You may see that I'm obsessed with white footwear. I have been since I was 15. I talk about it on Queer Eye constantly. I always give somebody a white pair of sneakers. It just goes with everything. Over the last year or two, I've become a little more obsessed with heels. And so I have I have a lot of heels that are at least a couple of inches high on my show Queer Eye. Um, everybody's over six feet tall. And then there's Cromo, who's like six five. To make this very clear, and I want to set the record straight once and for all, I am five nine. I am an average sized human, human man. That's all. And then I love the mirrored wall because it makes the space look so much larger. And there isn't room in the closet for a, a mirror for me to see myself. And so this offers me a space to check myself out when I'm fully dressed. Because of the fact that I truly have run out of space in this closet, we are now turning our basement into a walk-in closet, a fully functioning closet. And so I wanna show you that. It's not done yet, brace yourselves, it's terrifying. First things first. You're gonna back up slightly. This is an archway that was the original archway of the basement. They added this doorway, which I don't want because it doesn't tie in with the rest of the house. So we're gonna get rid of that and make this an archway the same as the rest of the house. This is the basement right now. This is uh, generally what the, the house looked like before we moved in. This, in my opinion, is going to be the most beautiful closet you have ever seen in your entire life. I've designed it myself. This is gonna be mostly papered. It's gonna be very quirky, desk or, or drawer situation in the center. This is going to be, I don't wanna to give too much away, but it's gonna be a full shoe wall. And then all of this is gonna have hanging space on the side. That's gonna have hanging space in there. We're gonna knock out the center wall and there's going to be a bed that is encased in an incredible uh, hanging closet. So I can uh, luxuriate and just enjoy the splendors of my closet. My husband, I assume, is not gonna be down here with me. He refuses to sleep downstairs. I don't care, I guess this is where we divorce and I separate and move downstairs into my closet and I choose clothes over my husband. Thank you so much for taking a tour around my house, but I've gotta kick you out. I've gotta get ready for my next flight, so see you all, bye.